Hey there, welcome to Jet Setting with Jackie. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Jackie, and if you're returning, thank you so much for always coming back and checking out my videos. This week's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm doing a vlog of the Blue Mountain culinary experience with a little bit of a twist. A few weeks ago, I decided to go and check out the Blue Mountains. And when I did a bit of research, I found that there was a Blue Mountain culinary trail. I don't think it's still in existence, but I wanted to check it out, check out the restaurants and see what that experience was like. By the way, I also have something super exciting happening this evening so in order to kill two birds with one stone i'm gonna do my makeup get ready to hit the road to montego bay so on a thursday we headed up to kingston and the gps took us the wrong way to begin with and we ended up at this square, which having a statue of Louise Bennett. If you're not familiar with Louise Bennett, she is a poet. She was born in Kingston and she is well known for basically embracing Patwa in her writing. So all of her poems are usually the Patwa dialect and it really was like the centerpiece of her work. She unfortunately passed away back in 2006 at the age of 86. Most Jamaicans have heard of Louise Bennett and if you have not, definitely look her up just to see what her work was like and the impact that she had on Jamaica. I had found the Blue Mountain Culinary Trail which supposedly started back in 2018 as like a three day event. The gist of it was you would go to different restaurants and you'd get to check out their food and learn about the Blue Mountain and the coffee and all that good stuff. But it seemed like that kind of faded away. I don't know, maybe a few years ago or maybe due to COVID. I know for most people when they hear the Blue Mountain, the first thought is the coffee, just because the coffee is so worldwide, it's well known, it's, you know, one of the best coffees in the world. Not to, you know, pump up Blue Mountain, but that is the coffee that I drink every morning. And it is great. Blue Mountain does have other things to offer. There's a lot of tours that happens up there. They have biking tours, hiking tours restaurants and waterfalls visits and things like that. There's so much more to it. Our first stop up the blue mountain was at crystal edge and cafe blue crystal edge has more of a typical jamaican cooked food menu from crystal edge we got this soup it was chicken soup which was um the soup of the day and as far as i know it was good i didn't try it but they said it was good cafe blue is definitely the cafe vibe where they provide you with typical cafe food and drinks to match even though I skipped out on the food from Crystal Edge and Cafe Blue, I was pretty hungry. And we passed by a cook shop on the left-hand side of the road. We stopped there and got fried chicken and rice and peas and some veggies. And I can say it was good. We bought a small, but as you can see, the container was pretty full. So you get your money's worth. The next stop up the mountain was Creighton Estate. The estate offers a one hour tour of the coffee farm and the great house. You will be able to learn about the coffee production process and you will also be able to try um, some of the coffees during a taste testing. 
We did not do Creighton Estates on this visit. The next stop on our list of places to see was a bed and breakfast named Raft Jam. I would love to say that we made it to this lovely place, but unfortunately, the road to get to this uh, bed and breakfast was less than ideal. It was pretty bad. We had one of the best drivers in Jamaica behind the wheel. And even with Pearly being an SUV, we still could not make it there without being concerned if we were going to be stuck and won't be able to get out. We even parked Pearly, got out and tried to walk to this place just to make sure we got to see it. And it still was a long walk. If you plan on booking Raft Jam, which from the looks of it, from pictures online, it does look like it's a beautiful place with amazing views. Just be prepared to find it hard to get there. After leaving Raft Jam, or after we turned back <laughs> because we couldn't make it to Raft Jam, we continued up the mountain and along the way we made some stops just to take some pictures because as you're riding up there, you will realize like how beautiful it is up in the mountains. There are some seriously amazing views of Kingston, the mountains, just nature around you. It is amazing. Our next stop along the trail was Europe in the summer or EITS cafe. Now this cafe, even though it was closed, so we really didn't get to eat anything. There was a, an employee there that was setting up for the next day. I guess because the holiday was coming up, most of the places up there were not really open. Um, but she did allow us to come in and take a look around. And this place is so beautiful. The views from there were amazing. I would love to go back and, you know, check out the restaurant, have some food, and really get to experience it the way that I wanted to. So, you're up in the summer, I'm going to come back. Once we left Europe in the summer, our next stop up the road was JDF Newcastle Training Camp. The barracks there were established in 1841 and it was given to Jamaica by Britain. In 1962, when Jamaica gained its independence, the training camp came into existence. It is set on the hillside with some of the most beautiful views of Kingston. It looks down and over Kingston and also the Blue Mountain. So definitely stop there, take in the views, check out the place. They do have signs and things up that gives you a little bit of the history of what the Newcastle training camp is and very interesting. Once we left Newcastle, we headed to Hollywell Park, which is where we spent most of our time on this trip. And it was so worth every minute of it. Hollywell is such a beautiful place. It's not just a typical park. It has several nature trails, five to be exact. Um, it has cabins that they rent out if you want to go up there and stay for a day or two or however long you want to. There's also picnic areas as well as barbecue areas and gazebos. So if you just want to go up there for the day and maybe hang out and do a cookout, spend some time with your family, that's also an option as well. There's a children's discovery zone where, you know, the kids can go and play while you cook or if you want to go hiking and have someone watch the kids, you can do that as well. Just a little bit more information on Hollywell. It is a part of the Blue Mountain and John Crow National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The highest point in Jamaica exists there, which is 7,402 feet high. The park is about 101,802 acres and it spans across 
four different parishes. It is in Portland, St. Andrew, St. Thomas, and St. Mary. The Blue Mountain and John Crow National Park is filled with animals, plants, wildlife, and of course, to my surprise, which I thought all my life that there were no snakes in Jamaica, I found out that this place is home to four of the six endemic snakes that live in Jamaica. Yeah, so you know what that means? I'm not gonna be going hiking the next time I go there. I'm not a fan of snakes, whether they are animals, or people. Hollywood Park has five nature trails and they range from easy to moderate as far as the level of difficulty and the time it takes ranges from 10 minutes to about an hour. The easiest one is the Blue Maho Trail which is about 10 minutes long and is listed as easy. The other four which are waterfall, shelter, Wide gate and oatly also if the cabins are not really your speed and you're more of hey i want to be in touch with nature type of person there is camping spaces that are available and they do rent tents so if you want to camp instead of you know maybe doing a cabin you can rent a tent from them at the entrance the park was recognized in 2015 as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And they took a lot into consideration when making that determination. But one of the big factors in that is the rich history of the Maroon community. And I would not do it justice to get into the Maroon history in this video, but there's so much to discuss that it is basically a research in itself. So if you're not sure, or if you've never heard about it, or you're curious, definitely check out the maroon history in Jamaica and what all that entails. I hope you found this video to be entertaining and fun because I had a lot of fun making it. It was a great experience. I enjoyed the views. They were breathtaking. Like you have to be there to really understand what it is truly like. Make sure to grab a sweater or something that's gonna keep you warm because the temperatures up there does get really windy. You know, the higher up you go above sea level, the colder it gets. I believe when I read about it, it the temperature can drop down to almost 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Be prepared by bringing something warm. That way you can enjoy your experience. And thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. If you would like to share what your experience was like at Blue Mountain, please leave a comment below. Or if you have any questions about any of the things that I did while I was there, go ahead and drop a comment or a question below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.